What's the jankiest indie show you've ever been to? Oh, shit. The jankiest one. Uh, it was definitely a Lucha one. Uh, actually, here in Richmond. Really? This was years ago. Uh, it's just very not well put together. Uh, and, and so after we did, after we started the scene, because we did start the scene, uh, I've always been very modest about this statement, but no, we did start the Lucha scene here. Lucha Libre with Mexican flips. In, in the Bay Area. Well, the style has been on forever, but as far as the training school and wrestlers that came out of the school, we were the first ones to okay. do it. Um, and then after that, people off shot and did their own things because I think they could do better. But what happens is that they don't have a... Uh, any sense of putting on a quality product so they'll bring in guys that don't train yeah. they don't have fat wrestlers that are sh out of shape yeah or you know don't have ring gear proper ring gear like they'll go up in sweats and the was, or go up drunk there was really no no um seriousness to it it was like oh let's just get drunk and, and go lawlessness on. yeah and but what that does is that 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 uh everyone's gonna go to a show like that and then think any other show that's put on is gonna be like that. So there's one in Richmond, it was at a boxing uh, gym. <clears throat> it was a very small boxing uh, I think I know. ring. I forgot the name of the spot now. DF uh, or Azteca? Oh shoot, I don't remember it, dude. I don't remember the actual name. But I went up to the promoter and I was like, and I was there with another wrestler, that's the only reason I went. And I, I told her, I'm like, hey, uh, you guys are using a boxing ring? Uh, and she looks at it and she goes, yeah, you, you, this is a wrestling ring. What are you talking about? I'm like, well, this has four ropes. And she's like, oh, what about how many ropes does a wrestling ring have? So that was my first clue. Like, you don't have no idea what you're doing. And just for people that don't know, what does that mean? Oh, so the boxing rings have uh, four ropes yeah. and they're they're loose. They're, they're not ropes, ropes. Yeah. They're not like the spring cable. No, there's no spring cable. You definitely can't do anything off those ropes. Um, and they're just meant there as a barrier you know for for the boxers to kind of so they don't fall confined. out if they yeah. get knocked out in yeah. a wrestling ring you need there's rope ropes too but they need to be tighter uh they need to be cable uh um preferably cable that way you can jump and spring and 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 go and run and hit the ropes type deal um so that was my first clue like you guys have no idea what you're doing oh. and sure enough all the wrestlers were doing the same move over and over and over so you're watching the first match and they were doing things in the match that they did in the main event. So it's like... No one did anything different. There's no communication. Dude. There's restricted like, from... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, usually with like a wrestling card, you want to kind of build. Yeah. Like, you want each match to kind of be a, a step up from the yeah, previous yeah, yeah, one. Yeah. You want it all to, you know, b b gel together and tell... Each match tells a story, and then the card itself tells a story. And the main event should be the biggest spectacle of it all. And so if the opening match is like doing dives to the floor and using chairs and doing flippy dippy stuff it's like hey well what's the main event supposed to do to outdo that what is what do you mean when you say he's telling stories like how like I, that i've always undertaker i saw an interview with him saying that he watches i forgot what guy and he loves how he tells a story on on the ring and yeah. i kind of to me i don't know what the yeah. fuck that means well i mean it's no different than like in, not a, you in, know, in a movie like if you watch like Rocky when he's fighting Apollo Creed at the end that fight has a story of you know Rocky getting his ass beat and yeah. overcoming oh, the odds to, to go toe to toe with Apollo Creed yeah. to the point where like you watch like the show the struggle yeah and like oh, you oh. you watch the first Rocky movie and like everyone's telling him to stay down Mick and Adrian are telling him to stay down and he fucking has the the fortitude to pull himself to his feet and the crowd goes crazy all he did was stand up and it's the most exciting part of the fight God. that's yeah. that's what wrestling is there's a psychology yeah. where like Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio would, did flippy dippy shit in their amazing match at Halloween Havoc, but they still told a story where every move they did meant something. Yeah, and you're on the edge of your seat, like, what's gonna happen? Yeah, Who's that, gonna win? So, like, when the day they did that Lucha show in Richmond recently, when that girl fought against that masked guy, that like a skeleton masked guy, and then she was like struggling to, and he kept dr knocking her down, and the whole crowd was like cheering every time she did something. Was that what you're like? Yeah, because you want you you want to elicit emotion from the crowd. You want the crowd to give a shit yeah. who wins and who loses. You want each move to tell a story and like, oh shit, how are they going to get up from that? Oh shit, you know what and I mean? Also good, like uh, Modest did a, a good example of that. For example, Modest used to do um, a dragon suplex. So basically you grab a guy from the back of the neck like this and then you he, you bridge over oh, and the guy shit. goes over. Yeah. So he goes to do it twice in the match 
Boom, boom. Oh, no, the guy's not letting him. Boom, okay, boom. That's, oh, he was going to do something big to him, but the other guy didn't let him. So it must have been something that was going to mess him up. Okay, boom. Now they do other shit. Oh, shit, he's got him again. He's going to fucking do it this time. No, nothing. So until he, then he Once does he it. he finally does it, it's a big. Oh, the crowd fucking pops. Like, oh, shit. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. That makes so sense. So, like, that. you remember, like, so when The Rock would finally get the guy in the, in the position and he'd do the... And then oh, that's the, when people's yeah, yeah, and that's when he's yeah. like, oh, he's finally gonna do it, and then he would get interrupted, and then he finally does it. And it's a big ass fucking yeah. Yeah, you want people to give a shit about what you're doing. Otherwise, why bother like throwing yourself at the ground if people don't give a shit? Why bother getting thrown through the flaming table if nobody gives a shit? Yeah, you know, if you're gonna put your body on the line, it should mean something. Here's here's the jankiest wrestling show I ever went to. Uh, this was I was in college, so this would have been like 2007 ish. Uh, is in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, we had to take a dirt road to get there. No fucking street yeah. lights. Uh, there's fucking haystacks everywhere outside the venue. Like, middle of nowhere. It's at a church of all places. Um, like, this church had, like, a gym. And so we're, there's fucking Jesus on the cross right there <laughs> above the entrance. And then on the card was Mustafa Saeed, New Jack's tag team partner. Yeah. And then big ass dude. Yeah, but then the craziest part is then like the 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 timekeeper, like the people who ring the bell and the people who play the music are like these three silver haired old white ladies with Coke bottle glasses. And so it was just a trip seeing Mustafa Said come out with gangster rap music playing, and there's just these three <laughs> old white ladies yeah. sitting there look like they might as well be crocheting. Uh, the ring broke like after the second match, so they had to go to intermission early. And then intermission was like an hour and a half while they tried to fix the ring. And they would have, they had fans try to help them fix the ring. So there was like s seven or eight dudes from the crowds like pushing on turnbuckles and uh, people climbing under the ring trying to reconnect cables. Yeah. It was the jankiest event I've ever been to. They did a raffle and it looks like they just raffled off stuff they found in the church's basement. There was like plastic gumball machines yeah. and picture frames and just yeah. the most random <clears throat> things you could find. And I'm how many people? There was like 15 people there. Yeah. No. Did you know that the Voice Party has merch, t-shirts, hoodies, wall clocks, bath mats, even mini skirts? We will throw our logo on absolutely anything. Click the link in the description below and pick up some Voice Party merch today.